Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken, we're playing Legendary Iron Man difficulty and we're um, at the end of month number 6, almost done with our mission galore. After getting our asses handed to us in the last smash and grab mission, this here is a mission which should be relatively straightforward. 30 intel plus an intel package is exactly what we need in order to continue expanding. We got a specialist, Bob Ross, a ranger, grenadier, sharpshooter and our um, yellow spark uh, to go onto this mission. Should be, like I said, pretty straightforward. All we need to do is hack the computer. Let's go. And we have landed yet again on a graveyard, on the very edge of a graveyard. It's a pretty long way until our target. We got one concealed. No, everyone's concealed. That's good. Perfect. It's not the fastest team in the world. So we need to find the right positions. Our sniper. I would actually like to move the sniper pretty far forward. There are civilians. Keep in mind those may or may not be faceless ones. Not sure why exactly they are on the graveyard, uh, but it is suspicious. Very, very suspicious. Rolling out. That's the first pack we were looking for. Bob Ross moves in. And whilst we are having concealment, I really like the idea of pushing forward. Seven to nine enemies. It begs the question, are we even engaging them? Are we moving on forward? There isn't much maneuvering room here. So that's why I would decide to engage them. Could start with this. Pretty solid hit and we're probably hitting the civilian slash faces one question mark. The other option could be to go over here and hit them with a grenade. Not the worst idea. But I think we might want to start with the mech. I'll keep the grenades. The mech is good even without its um, shredder gun. And the grenades are much better in cover removal. Nice one. So far we haven't found a single faceless one. Doesn't mean that these here couldn't be faceless ones. Moving over to flank and kill the Viper. Let's kill this Viper. Yeah, I didn't get it. 
No, you did not get it. And it was, well, it wasn't full cover, so... You might be excused. So that's a flanking position right there. Grenade. That's disorienting the Viper. I'm not sure if the Spectre can be disoriented. Probably not. Oh, I stand corrected. It can. That also means we don't need to fear the Shadowbound ability. Problem is you can't suppress the... You can't suppress its ability to Shadow... Uh, well, you can suppress the Shadowbound ability, but uh, the ability to Lightning Reflex. So an Overwatch here wouldn't make any sense, which means we're giving Gunner an aid protocol, the mech theoretically can take extra hits without being injured. Well, no one does have an option to to just lightning reflex her shots. Well, that's a bit of a problem. This here is easy as a flank, but I don't want to waste any abilities at the moment if we can simply kill it. There we go. Wasp moves in. Keep in mind there is still a Spectre left. Okay, nice. Very nice. Half cover, half cover, full cover. We're sticking with full cover. This will probably not remove the tree, but you never know. No, it does not. But the heavy rocketeer might still die from a 50-50, unfortunately not. Moving up. I wish we could go for a flashbang play here. Can't, unfortunately. Instead, full cover for us. And let's kill this guy. Well, that's good enough. We know the Spectre is here. Because you saw the little... Um, disorientation removed sign. 
That's the only person who he shouldn't have triggered uh, or touched because we can't remove the shadow bone. Now we definitely need to kill the spectre. Okay, but the mech can simply move up and kill it. That shouldn't be a problem. to press on but that's probably not a wise idea instead let's move into solid cover solve this issue here Sharpshooter. Hmm. Might want to simply move him this turn. The loot was still worth the risk. Fortunately, we get some more enemy. Uh, we have some more enemies in common. here. Let's kill this guy first. Target eliminated. Ammunition level at critical. We could Try to remove the cover here. Oh. Didn't really work as intended, to be honest. And the question for our sniper now is, are we going to move or are we going to stay? We can hand over an action, teamwork action, take another grenade, could flashbang both of them, which is probably the right play, to be honest. I don't think that we can get the Viper this turn. I don't think that we would kill it, and even if so... Standing out in the open here, not a very good position to be in. Get ready for a surprise. Even though we would have had rapid deployment next round, this is still the right play in my perspective. Moving over here to get better line of sight on everyone. Moving into full cover with Bob Ross and our gunner takes the A protocol into full cover. Are you shitting me? Okay. Good. We're soon going to have reinforcements coming in, so it's not as easy as it looks like. Whoa. 
we're also planning. Uh, we're already planning for the evac. This is Firebrand. Evac request confirmed. Hold tight. And let us get radio uh, rid of the Overwatch first. That worked quite well. Moving into full cover. And let's kill it. You know that, was good. that was pretty damn good, yeah. Ammo out. Can we get a better angle? We are advancing the mech over here. Let's kill the Grenadier. 50-50 unfortunately misses. Flashbang too far away. Fortifying our position. Trying to hurt him a little bit, like he's in full cover at the moment, but we do have a decent position in smoke. And one of the things that we can do is offer the same luxury over here. Bob Ross is overwatching. Incinerary grenade. Oh shit. It's an acid grenade. Well, that hurts. Time to remove the overwatch. And we removed that pretty well. I'm wondering, we can't see him from here. Our biggest problem is if we move, we are going to regret that decision because we're probably going to die. So we're essentially trapped here. Thanks, by the way, for the hazmat vests, which allows uh, allow us to still stay in position and ignore the asset with our soldiers. Nice little advanced scope. Can't get to them. Can't heal our mech either. What we can do is we can make sure that it's not easily being targeted. But that's pretty much it. I 
All right, that's the only position where he, ha um, where she has a free shot. Mm, even more loot, great. Ten percent chance. Wow. Well, we can't move. Might as well take a shot. It's a forty percent chance. We're overwatching, meaning that our gunner has a higher chance to be targeted. Three more turns, I mean. Our gunner essentially needs to completely move there. Can't afford to wait any longer. And this is hopefully going to remove him. Very low now. Overdriving. We're no longer we're no longer in an acidious environment. Moving up. We are shredded though. What? Where? Right over there. Gotcha. We're green to go. Good. Time for the obligatory faces one to show its face. Only the, best. the reason why it immediately um, got detected or showed itself is it. because. We have no more enemies on the map. Where do you want it? Moving up with Bob Ross. I don't think that we can move there fast enough. Bob has just too little movement left over. Maybe I'm wrong. Location confirmed. We're close. Good, I was wrong. Bob essentially can still hack it, which is great. Servos engaged. Taking loot. Another PCS, good. Moving everyone up. Our sniper needs to reload. Okay, I'll go. I'm going. The Advent Network Terminal is shutting down. This is your last chance to secure the data. Interestingly enough, a harder mission than I would have expected. We're taking the intercos because we want to get as as many regions as possible. The new rebel would have been nice as well. Successful acquisition of the advent files. Eliminate any remaining hostiles in the area. OK. 
Okay, moving over here, and then we're overwatching. Whatever you say. Affirmative. Covering now. Our mech also needs to get out of here. And that's another Overwatch. Overwatch ever. This is Firebrand. It's time to go. Got it, move it. Bob moves out. Essentially everyone in here moves out, including our heavily injured mech. Yeah, that might be a fast kill. Good. Closer than I wanted uh, it to happen. Like the last mission and, to, uh, and this mission <coughs> were surprisingly rough. And maybe I just played both of them really bad, I don't know. But for 11 kills, it felt harder than I would have expected it. Good, we got one promotion. Ross made it to Tech Sergeant. Good job. I like the extra healing, but I also like fail safe for obvious reasons. It's almost too good to not take it. I definitely like full override. The question that I'm asking myself with the build is, for me, it kind of specifically the revival protocol as well as medical protocol and field medic completely goes without saying that these are by far the best in their respective ranks. I like field surgeons uh, due to the way how I'm specific or we are specifically playing the campaign which makes it less likely that someone's like lengthily injured so it's almost a requirement uh, to that degree and interference isn't that good, covering fire is okay. Um, so from that angle, the first four are a given. Since we're taking a lot of damage overall, um, uh, unless we're having uh, the in improved uh, map kits, which we don't have yet, it's a huge difference between healing like four and eight hit points. Um, it, it essentially doubles the amount of hit points that we can heal. So that's a really good talent. And the failsafe one, I feel failsafe makes it more likely that you are simply going for hacks. Um, so there is no downside. And that's what makes it so good. But at the, sa at the same time, it isn't so far situational as hacks um, are not making or breaking most of the missions. Yes, from time to time it's good and... I, I fully agree, if you can hack a sector pod, that's absolutely fantastic. But the idea should be to have a high enough hack set to, uh, to begin with, in order to get an 80 or 90% uh, chance to not even go into, into the negative effects. So, I'll continue going with uh, Savior for now. I like Deadeye, but I like Run and Gun more, and I like Combat Fitness more. 
That's what we're saving for. Two Alarium Cores, Advanced Scope. Comet Rush is good. That's an interesting one. Reduces wound recovery time and grants immunity to acid and poison. I mean, we got our hazmat vest, but it's good for someone who wouldn't have a hazmat vest, uh, meaning that person is only susceptible to fire. Okay, we got, as always, a lot of injured folks. But we also got a pretty decent extra supply of intel. And we have an extra mech over there. Wait a second. Let's first finish making contact and then we're going there. Good. Got another lieutenant training or another officer training done. Which means we can continue with Ripper to... Wait a second. Anyone else? I mean, yeah, Bob Ross could start his training process, but for now I would give the Shinobi's priority. I really like incoming. It has helped us a few times now. And I like it because it is a free action. So you're not wasting any actions on it. Okay, let's continue. Archons gain the close combat specialist ability, granting them reaction fire against any enemy who closes uh, within four tiles. Hmm. That is bad. I mean, that's incredibly bad. Whew, what a month. And we're now in September, which is the legendary difficulty spike that we were talking about. I just felt that the missions were getting more difficult, and I just look at September. Indeed, they were becoming more difficult. So, one of them was a smash and grab mission. A lot of avatar progress due to also the um, the major dark event. Lots of dark events which we couldn't stop. And Edwin raided us, but they didn't successfully raid us, so that's co incorrect. Seven missions, covert ops, proving ground, another ambush, region uh, liberated, raids defeated, yes. And I think there is still uh, there is something missing because we have uncovered two uh, two times uncovered um, faceless ones, and we've done a couple more missions. So this year is not hundred percent accurate, but at least fifteen missions last month. And we're running into a few issues at the same time. She starts getting so much knowledge that we need to be somewhat prepared for her to uh, to go for us. We can kill him before he has enough knowledge. I'm not sure if we need to defend against her. Alright, aliens try to snuff out XCOM, adding more enemies uh, to every mission for a month. Well, <laughs> that is great. Don't know the other dark event, but I can already assume that it's going to be bad. Uh, might as well get an additional resistance contact. That's an option. We don't need it right now. Uh, we could save time by collecting everything instantly, or we're just moving this one here. And look at the other rewards. Will recovers 20% uh, faster. That's pretty good. Um, that makes the tired um, uh, state really, really... or that will fast our recovery from being tired. Resources plus 20% are good. 20% premium for supplies means uh, effectively 20% more income for us because 
the black market is our main source of income. Intel rewards increased by 10%. These here are okay as well, but I feel that this might be the best for now. I usually like to use the resistance orders in order to get combat buffs, because the combat buffs are incredibly strong, the economical buffs are so-and-so. Mm, -so. That is great, that one is great, so those two are really, really strong, I like them. Will Recovery to a degree is a combat buff as well because um, it'll make you heal faster overall. So yeah, let's try to do the plus 20% uh, payment. Hunter is after something in this area. What? Okay, so instead of being able to like go over here, which I thought we initially could do, right? Uh, we now need to make like all the way over here, really. Yeah, we lost some intel due to the Chosen taking it away from us. I think our next... We're, we're still okay on the Avatar project, so making our way here is good. Shouldn't have priority... Yeah, making contact here will help us a lot due to a simple fact. Wait a second, did we build... No, we did not build a radio tower. Hmm. Probably need to build a radio tower up here because we want to have the continent bonus, which is um, new contact with regions is made instantly. And that isn't bad because when we're afterwards expanding over here, it's just a matter of having enough intel, right? Volunteering army is great. And that one theoretically, we the theoretically could do that. Might as well want to go here first, build a radio tower because we need to do one anyways, and then go to the western US because we now know that they are connected, right? So this here is a connection. Let's do the supply drop first. Avenger plotting new course. I was really hoping that there would be a connection to to um, Asia. Got a new target, Intel, yes, and additional Intel, yes. Oh, thank you, that's great. We want to do that Setting mission. Course for Chile. Setting course for Sector 12, East Africa. Okay, wait, wait, wait. One one thing at a time. So let's first of all double check. Is everyone doing what they're supposed to do? No. Of course, there is someone hiding here instead of recruiting, right? Everyone else seems to be doing reasonably well. They are going for intel. They are recruiting. We're going for supplies over here. Good. We need to do our HQ assaults very soon and in the meantime 
This here should be yep. The next mission that we're that we're infiltrating. The missions down here in South America are incredibly good. We get all of the VIP missions. Um, I'll explain something for the missions just in a second. All right, let's uh, shortly explain whom we're going to take on this mission and then I'll explain a little bit about missions in general. We're going in with a team of uh, rookies because uh, the uh, baseline is so light that we're only having like seven to nine enemies uh, there. I had the, uh, the choice to go in with even more than six. Let me see that for a second one second. Yeah, but I decided we're going in with six, two of which are complete rookies. <laughs> which means uh, Big Daddy, our second mech, uh, led by a shinobi called Rattler and a gunner, will hopefully carry this mission. Again, we only need to fight against um, a maximum of three packs. And we essentially just need to take out uh, the VIP and extract it. Um, the reason why I'm uh, only selecting six and not seven or eight, although there's plenty of time left, is we want to have one more squad just in uh, case another mission pops up. I deliberately left a few better soldiers back up. So I wanted to speak about the missions before I created um, uh, the squad, which is the Vigilance Let's talk uh, shortly about Vigilance level and how it kind of interacts with mi missions. The Vigilance level here is 3, meaning they have absolutely no idea that we're kind of going for them at the moment. And uh, with Vigilance levels lower than 7, so everything up to 7, you're getting pretty decent missions. A lot of extraction missions, a lot of VIP missions, um, additional scientists, engineers and so on and so forth. Vigilance levels uh, from 8 to 15 um, uh, already reduce the pool of missions quite substantially and everything above 15 just uh, requires to only prevent something um, or um, majorly, uh, majorly fight against uh, them in, for instance, hacking a device or preventing a data leak. So the pool gets really, really small and the rewards, once you are in a high vigil vigilance environment, are only Intel and uh, some very, very seldomly something else. So that's why we had so much Intel to begin with, because we're like at Vigilance 30 and 18, which is crazy. By the way, we're back to strength number 9. They have reinforced yet again, which even tells me we just got to assault uh, sooner than later and um, knock them out so that we're not getting another infiltration here. Good. We got plenty of supplies. And one of the things that I'd like to do, we're going to go for the U, uh, for the UFO crash site up here, and then right afterwards we're going to make contact. And probably one of the infiltrations will be done by now. There we go. Yep, we got. An infiltration, 100% infiltration here. And we got another infiltration over here, hacking the workstation. So that'll be Intel. And that'll be a scientist plus Intel. Yeah, let's start with the scientist in our next mission. And then we're going to do this. Plus our A-team has finalized the HQ assault. Boy, oh boy. Um, it looks like many of the missions are actually done. By the way, I'm seeing another one here. Wait a second. Oh, that was the other scientist mission. Shit, I completely forgot about it. Okay, so... 
See, we left one. We left one team open. Should have probably done that earlier. Let me get the team together. Good. The mission only has a light enemy activity, so we're taking just a few, but good soldiers. And we will probably need to boost this mission to 104% so that we keep it light. Elsewise, we're immediately jumping up to moderate. And we don't want to fight against 20 enemies with 4. So this will need to be boosted. But 30 intel for a scientist is a trait that I'm willing to take, to be honest. Yeah, and we need to launch that now, which will be the task of our next mission. Commander. Let's double check, fourth on the strengths, yes, yes. way we can stop them is to strike first, and we'll need to work on a covert action with the resistance in order to do that. We should head to the ring. Got an extra engineer there, that's fine. Okay, good. I think that was it. Thank you for watching, guys. And we're going to see each other in the next mission. Bye-bye.